Shalom Chavarim, I'm Steve Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. And uh, this evening, uh, a video my wife shared with me, uh, one that uh, uh, Mr. Shapira shared on his uh, uh, YouTube channel, Havat Ami, uh, Amimi. We wanted to share a clip of this with you guys. I, it looks like to me this was filmed at Mark Biltz's, uh, with his congregation there in Washington State. And, uh, you know, I really hate to even bring things like this up, but the things that are being said are so serious uh, on, sal on a salvation level. And it is very needful that we bring these issues up. And uh, me and my wife are actually working on... Uh, preparing for uh, the video to go much deeper in depth. Uh, a little bit on what uh, Mr. Shapira says here, as well as Mark Brown, the video I did the other day. But there was something, a, a revelation that had struck my wife over uh, regarding Hosea uh, really struck me as well as, as God revealed something to her, something totally different than I had ever seen before. I've always spoke about Hosea 6 as a future fulfillment. And, uh, you know, just based from looking at the scriptural text, what it says, and as uh, we were, and, and quite frankly, I can't even tell you how we got to Hosea 6 based on this information that uh, uh, Mr. Shapira speaks about right here, Yitzhak Shapira. But uh, at, at any rate, we got into this, and once we did, it just really, really uh, touched my heart. And uh, but at the same time, I wanted to to share a little bit of what what uh, Mr. Shapira says here at the 15 minute mark on this video, and also again at the 17 minute mark, about a minute each time, and then discuss with you um, the error and the correction to that error, because Mr. Shapira is going to talk to you about uh, that salvation for Gentiles cannot happen until salvation of the Jews happens first. Now, in one way, I would agree with him, but I think the timing is off. That's where the problem comes in. As my wife so beautifully pointed out, is something, of course, I've always believed as well, that when Christ came, when he died on the cross, he said it was finished, the salvation was done, uh, redemption, the gula was already complete, and we are totally missing that, especially amongst the believers today around the world, and yet uh, it is being put in the future. And this is why we feel the urgency to come out and correct these things. So without further ado, let me take and play this uh, couple of clips here for you so you can see what we're speaking about there. Israel as a whole walking into the relationship and the new covenant with the God of Israel, then all of Israel will be complete and then our redemption will be complete as well. I know it's important to understand that, but hello, Jeremiah 31 says, Behold, I'm giving a new covenant to the house of Israel and to the house of Gentiles and Judah. He doesn't say, I have given it to the Gentiles. The nations need Israel. You need Messianic Judaism to succeed. You depend at Messianic Judaism on thriving. Yes, you do. I want you to know that, and I'm not saying in a prideful spirit, it is part of the package. The second the church wants to have their own journey, that is separate from Israel's journey, that's when you're going to start to run into trouble. And that's exactly what you see in the Torah portion this week. You, basically, as we hear it right from the mouth of uh, Yitzhak Shapira there, you have to have Messianic Judaism to survive. Talmudic Judaism, this is what we need. And I've been showing you guys message after message where Yeshua clearly is against Messianic, or excuse me, as far, not Messianic, but Talmudic Judaism. Because after all, 
Mr. Shapira tells uh, tells the Sephardic Jews down uh, that are believers in Yeshua down in South America, they had to repent for leaving Judaism and to go back underneath the rabbis of Israel. And now he's telling you it's a package deal until the house of Israel and the house of Judah fulfill the covenant, covenant of redemption, you can't get saved. Well, like I said, though, in one way, there's some truth in what he says. The only difference is, is what's missing here is the fact that that new covenant of Jeremiah 31 has already been fulfilled. Before we go on to the next portion here, let me just share that with you real quick. I want to, he's talking about Jeremiah 31 and that's and specifically down near verse 30. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, for as much as they broke my covenant, although I was a Lord over them, saith the Lord, but at this covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts, in their heart will I write it, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. I agree wholeheartedly with that. But, Mr. Shapira, that was fulfilled at the time of Christ. That new covenant was already fulfilled, and it's to be within the inward part, in the heart. All right? And, and to prove the point, I mean, let's look at this. Go back up to verse 14, in fact. You want to see when the time frame of fulfillment is? Thus saith the Lord, a voice is heard in Ramah, lamentation, bitter weeping, Rachel weeping for her children. She refuses to be comforted for her children because they are not. And we know that from the New Testament, as the gospel writers write, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is a uh, I forget which, how many of the books actually speak of the story here, but when the children were murdered by King Herod, it is attributed to the prophecy right here of Jeremiah 31, verse 14. Rachel weeping for her children, and she cannot be comforted because they're not. Thus saith the Lord, refrain thy voice from weeping and thine eyes from tears, for thy work shall be rewarded, saith the Lord. They shall come back from the land of the enemy. The whole chapter is the redemption of Israel, of the Hebrew nation. Yes, salvation does belong to the Jew first. You know, it's kind of interesting. You know, the other day when uh, I was speaking about uh, Michael Brown and he was talking about how that uh, salvation is of the Jews, and he actually quoted from uh, the Gospel of John when he states that there, and, you know, as I, as I was looking at this, I was really perplexed by one particular word there, and it's translated Jews, because in the Greek is Judean. And my wife told me today, because I was sharing with her, that, you know, if you look at the Greek there, it's not that the salvation is of the Jews, but salvation is of Judea. In other words, the Mashiach would be from the land of Judea. And she says, you didn't know that in the 18th century they changed in the Bible and they put Jews instead of Judea? I had no idea. No clue at all. So, at any rate, it sets the stage for the timing, which is the time of Christ, which we know scripturally is so true, right? So anyway, I just wanted to bring that up before we get much further into this. Let's go ahead and go. We'll jump up to verse, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, the moment of 17 minutes, 1655. Let's start right there. Tribe of Menashe. Oh, yeah, sure. They're part of the house of Israel. But they thought for a second that their journey was over. You follow what I'm telling you? They came to a green pastures. They said, we are saved. We are redeemed. We found the promised land. We are entering in. But there's a word here to us to take. Nobody can enter in their point of rest until Israel go in first. Because Israel is the son of God. They are the firstborn. And unless Israel come in first, no Gentile in the world, in the universe, will have a complete salvation. Exclamation point. 
going, period. And this is what people believe. Now, I notice he put the word complete. You know why he does that? Because he has to leave himself a loophole. Mr. Shapiro needs to leave a loophole because he also knows that according to the book of Acts, chapter 10 and verse 47, can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? If you back up, we can see, though, it's the Gentiles. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God and then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. And they prayed uh, they, uh, excuse me, then prayed they him to tarry certain days. Wow. Mr. Shapira, it looks like the Gentiles were already receiving the baptism of the Spirit, the gula, the redemption. All right? Now, as you saying here that no one can receive it until Israel has gotten theirs first, that's the whole point. Christ had already come. And in fact, if we go over here to the book of Matthew, we find out in Matthew chapter 10, verse 6, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out the devils freely you have received, freely give. And he does say, these 12, speaking about the 12 apostles, Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not in the way of the Gentiles and into the city of the Samaritans. Enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So it's obvious that the children of the house of Israel didn't live in the same city as, as the children living in the land of uh uh, or the gent or live the, those that live in the in the in the uh, the land or, or the the lands of the Gentiles. In fact, I looked at that in the Hebrew and Matthew just to be sure of that, and that was very much true. You know, so anyhow, somehow or another, though, me and my wife we got on this subject uh, because of what Shapiro was talking about, and I know that I have taught so many times from the book of Hosea, and uh, when I get into the book of Hosea, I also have been putting this the fulfillment of the house of Israel and the house of Judah coming together in the last days and that the fulfillment was still yet to come. But the awkward thing is most of us know that the house of Israel for the most part are already believers in Yeshua. Now this is something I did know. And if they're already believers in Yeshua, they believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, what need of redemption do they have need of? Think about it. Right? And somehow or another, I told my wife, I said, let's go over to Hosea. And, and I know what it was. I actually started with chapter 5. And I think this is why we got started on this. We, we weren't even going to look at, I wasn't really looking at going to chapter 6. But I said, it is interesting. I said, because if you think about it, scripturally, God was already there at the time of the exile of Judah. And I read to her this right here. And I told her, I said, it's interesting. I said, because not only that, and I know what it was. We were talking about, was the house of Israel actually present during the time when Christ was there in the land? I said, well, in, in some form, yes, they were. I said, but let's just look at the word of God here. Because I said, I find it interesting. Hosea chapter 5 says, and when Ephraim saw his sickness and Judah his wound, Ephraim went to Assyria and sent to King Contentious, but he is not able to heal you, neither shall he cure you of your wound. For I will be unto Ephraim as a lion and as a young lion to the house of Judah. I even I will tear and go away. I will take away and there shall be none to deliver. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their guilt and seek my face. In their trouble they will seek me earnestly. And so I was saying to my wife, I said, you know, I said, in that regards there, yeah, you know, it's true. Ephraim represents the house of Israel. I said, the one that's tearing 
and goes away to his place until they acknowledge their guilt, I said, it's, it's actually Christ himself. It's the Messiah. And then I said, and of course, the interesting thing is, is then we have the redemption side of it, Hosea 6. And as I turned it over, and I, I, I hadn't even, I didn't even start reading it yet, my wife says, well, it says right there that two days he will, rev he will revive them, and on the third day he's going to raise them up, and they will live in his presence. She said, that happened when Christ was here. And you know, for all these years, I have taught this is a future fulfillment and you know why I kept reading it in English but the moment my wife said this there was a side of me ready to be defensive but at the moment she read said those words to me the Holy Spirit come upon me and I saw what she was saying and immediately I saw the fulfillment and I knew the fulfillment was written already in the scripture in Matthew we may live in his presence and he will raise us up but I, I knew that the fulfillment was there but I'm like wait a minute I, I, I it, although God had revealed to me Matthew's gospel in the 27th chapter was the fulfillment was laying there but even though I'd gotten the revelation like she had gotten I, at the same time I, di I didn't know how to make sense of it because I'm like well, but, but, but wait a minute the, the natural side of me is saying but the two days after two days that's to 2,000 years he will revive us on the third day he will raise us up and I'm thinking of the house of Israel 780 BC they were scattered as well so that makes it in the third day they're going to both be revived up well, you know, if you think about it, though, then that's like saying that they can't get saved until then. And that's another point my wife pointed out. She said, do you mean to tell me then that, the, that no Jew could be saved until that actually happened? She said, that's what Shapira is saying. Until there's a completed redemption, the Gentiles can't get saved. And so I'm like... And, and, and just for that moment, after I saw the revelation myself, I said, all right. Of course, now I'm not using, I didn't have the Hebrew Bible up with me. I was looking at an English Bible just like you, like, like she would look at or, or you would look at. Because I know when we're reading these things, I don't need a Hebrew, you know, to look at it. But I'd never even paid attention. Do you realize that it says right here, it doesn't even say it? And after two days, he will revive us. It doesn't say that. It starts off right here. Yachayanu. Yachayenu. All right? That is literally. Now, you can say revive, but he will give us life. And the chai is his own life. All right? He will give us life. Mayamin. Miyamim, Miyamim. Do you know what Miyamim is? Miyamim is not two days. It's from the days, like days gone by, like long ago. He's going to give us life. Who? The ones from the days gone by. From the days. He's going to give them life. Beyom Hashlishi. On the third day. Okay? Yak. Yakumenu, all right, he will raise us, he will raise us. And we will have life. Lifneyav before him. Now, let's look at it. Then I begin to realize, wait a minute. It's not after two days he will revive us. But he's going to revive the ones that are from the days gone by. All right? And I saw that in English. He will raise us up that we may live in his presence. And I knew when it said raise up, I knew it was speaking of the resurrection. All right? And that's the revelation I'd gotten. It was speaking of the rev resurrection. By the way, that's why you don't need no Kabbalah. All right? You don't need no Talmud. You don't need no Gematria. You need the revelation of the Holy Spirit. What did Jesus say to Peter when he said, Who do you say that I am? 
They said, well, some say you're this, or some say you're that, you know. And he said, but who do you say that I am? He said, thou art the Son of God, the King of Israel that was come to the world. Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven has revealed this to you. You know why they use Kabbalah? Because they have no revelation. All right? But anyway, praise God. I, you know, I have to just, honestly, I have to say, forgive me, because I've taught you guys many times, too, as this is a future thing. It's not that I didn't believe that there was saving, God was saving souls and everything, but I wasn't thinking of the ramifications of this. And, and, I, and I really, I, in a way, I can't even fault Yitzhak Shapira for that because maybe he looks at it the same way. They get revived at a certain time. The only difference is, is he, like myself, he shouldn't know that Jesus Christ fulfilled the redemption process and that the law of God is no longer on stone, but it should be in the tables of your heart. Not a future event. All right, so we go back to Hosea, right? Now, I got to focus on this a little bit with you because it's just unbelievably exciting, right? So he literally, he, yeah, chayenu, all right? He gives us life, mayamim, from the days gone by. All right? Now, i got to show you something here. Let's look at the fulfillment first. I pulled up the Hebrew math. Yeah, I just like it a lot. If we go to chapter 27, verse 52. The graves were open, and many of those that were asleep, okay, in the dust arose they came out of their graves and after this they entered the holy city and were revealed to many all right and just for the sake of those that would like it right out of the king james version bible i'll go there for you guys as well matthew 27 verse 52 and it says, And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose, and came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city, and appeared unto many. Notice that in verse 53. And came out of the graves when? After his resurrection. What did Hosea say? Hosea said, after two days, not after two days, Yachayenu, uh, see, he will give us life from the days. In the third day, Yachayenu, he will raise us up. When does he raise up? Christ rose up on the third day, didn't he? When did they raise up? After his resurrection. When? Beyom hashlishi. Hashlishi. On the third day. Literally, the third day, they rose up with him according to the scripture. And who rose up? It was those from the days gone by. Miyamin. Miyamin. Excuse me. Oh, wow. You guys get, do you see what I'm talking about there? I mean, that's just blows me away. Now, I got to share with you something, though. How this works. And Mr. Shapira, I don't know, maybe you'll see this video as well. I just encourage you, brother, you really should look at this seriously. Right? Because you want to know where the redemption part is? Go to Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Okay, then the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. And what did he do to that man when he formed him from the dust of the ground? He breathed into his nostrils that breath of life. What did Hosea say was going to happen to those people there? He said that from those days they would get the chaya. The life. 
Remember, I've taught you guys over and over and over what happened in Genesis chapter 2. After when we get to or excuse me, chapter 3, when Adam and Eve sinned, they forfeit the tree of life. And I said, when, when he breathed into them, the uh, you know, that, that life, the chayim is in the plural. Why? Because Adam and Eve are both in the same body. Okay? Adam, though, he becomes ve'ahi ha'adam le'nefesh chaya. He becomes a living soul. Right? But we go down to verse 9. We find out, and out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of what? Of life also. Right? Ve'et Chachayim. Christ, Mashiach, Yeshua HaMashiach was the tree of life. And so therefore, on the third day, when he rose up, they rose up also, right? Hosea, here we go, Hosea. On the third day, right? There we go. That's what the third day is about. I had it mixed up. Forgive me. I didn't mean to do that. Beyom hashlishi. Yakumenu. See? Yakimenu. All right? And he will raise us up. Who did he raise up? The ones from the days. From the days. What? Basically the days gone by. Matthew right here. And the graves were open and many of the bodies of the saints which slept arose. And came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and peered into many. There it is. And I didn't I just didn't see it. The third day. You know, friends, it's just amazing to me. And I had Second Timothy up here. Let me just see why. Oh yeah. You know, I don't even know if I want to bring this out right now. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. I tell my wife this, you know, I said, this is really dealing with the Pharisee, Pharisees. And, and the, I said, the reason you know it, because see, Paul, when he, or, or Timothy writes it, I think it's a letter from Paul, but written by Timothy. This know also that the last day perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. We think that this is just the people of today. And it is. It is speaking of today's people. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof from such turn away. They do have a form of godliness. When they deny the power thereof, they deny Christ. They deny Yeshua as the Messiah. For this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers' lust. You know who those silly women are? That's churches. That's those ones that have that form of godliness. They're coming in amongst the different Religious circles, I don't want to just say churches. Some people say, oh, yeah, yeah, it's just the churches. It might be the Messianic group, too. It might be a Hebrew Roots movement, too. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. They study all the time. Constantly. Now, you want to know who they are? It's right here. Now, as Jane, Janes and Jambers withstood Moses, so do these resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. Remember, they came out of Egypt, a mixed multitude, a Janes and Jambers. But they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all. The word men is just added there. It doesn't say men, actually. Their folly shall be, made, uh, shall be manifest unto all, as their, theirs also was, as Janes and Jambers was. How's that going to be done there? Well, I don't know how it'll actually be made, man, be made known, their folly, but we do know, according to Daniel, Daniel said that the, the violent among your people, which meant that there would be Jews among our own people. And it's sad, friends, because it's, all, it's my people as well. Among your own people will try to establish division, but what? They shall stumble. For their folly shall be manifest unto all men. They're going to stumble. Why? Because somebody's going to tell you what they're doing. 
It's very sad, friends. We're living in a very, very, very serious hour. Listen, let me just remind you guys, this conference coming up, go to IsraeliNewsLive.org. Go to our website there. Um, scroll down here to Orlando Conference, August 17th, 2019. Click on that if you're planning on coming to the conference. It's one day only. And uh, go down and, and click to where you can make a comment, like the person here did, Jennifer. I plan to attend just myself. All right? And that's what we need to be able to see so we know how many is actually coming. Uh, every few days or so, I go back and I approve the comments so that we get the number count uh, of those that are coming. Uh, and we're able to, to make sure that we've not overgone the number. We have 67 comments. So right now with that 67, that's going to be one person for sure for every one of those numbers there. Many of those are coming in pairs. So I would say we're probably close to 100. We can see it about 150 uh, is what our limit is on the building there. And it'll be my wife and I speaking. Uh, Deanne Loper will not be with us. And also our mailing address there if you would like to help support uh, the work we do here, including the event. There's no charge on this particular event here. Uh, we will take up an offering to help cover the cost of this, but, but just as a reminder there is all. But anyway, God bless you. Thank you for listening to this broadcast tonight. Trust it is a blessing to you.